right. Um, we have the honor and privilege at this point to have Representative Adam Keenig with us. And I just got to meet him this morning, a very interesting man. He is from District 69 and served in the House of Representatives from 2007 to 2022. In his spare time, he is a realtor for Colwell Banker. He graduated from Miami University with a bachelor's degree in political science. He has ser served with the Kentucky Area Planning Council and was their past president. In the legislature, he has worked on the House Banking and Insurance Committee, Small Business and Information Technology, Licensing and Occupation and Local Government. He has been a friend to the Kentucky Council for a very long time, instrumental in getting our name out there and uh, what we are trying to promote. As Kentucky Council, we take no um, position, yay or nay, on expanded gambling. We're not authorized to do that, allowed to do that. We do, however, feel that if there is going to be gambling in this state, we need to have funding from all the money that's made. We need to have funding that comes to us to help in paying for education, treatment, and prevention activities. Currently, there's 41 states in the United States that do receive that. Our friends around us receive that. Kentucky does not. And if you get the opportunity to talk to your legislators, that's something we'd like for you to share with them, that we would very much like to see some funding come to us, like other states have, that will pay and help pay for these activities. And Adam has been instrumental in trying to get this pushed forward for quite some time now. And without further ado, Adam. Thank you, Doctor. That was very nice. It's uh, always amazing how uh, great a, uh, uh, a bio sounds when you write it yourself. Um, I stand uh, before you as a, a uh, now washed up politician, we'll say, uh, or as I like to say, public servant. Um, I, I just finished, uh, the, the voters decided 27 years in various elective office was, was enough for me. Uh, and this past year, and so uh, I've never been a fan of political jokes, but uh, uh, now that I'm not one, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one, which is uh, there. There's an event at a at a golf club, and the local politician gets up to to start talking and and, and give a speech, and a couple uh, few uh, uh, folks in the back decide it's a good time to run off to the bar. And they're standing at the bar, and they're there for a while, and they hear the politician droning on. And uh, they, a new person comes back and, and joins them at the bar, and they say, what is that guy talking about? And the politician says, I don't know. He's still introducing himself. <laughs> so uh, let me take this opportunity to introduce myself. Okay. <laughs> um, I... Uh, Everything uh, is uh, came off my, my bio there, but I'm also uh, I've now started a consulting company to work with uh, uh, folks on uh, improving policy in Kentucky or or any place else uh, that would like to see my help. I'm uh, I'm also a realtor, but uh, in large part I'm here as the um, previous chairman of licensing occupations and administrative regulations in the House, a sponsor of several gaming related bills which i will get into uh, but uh yeah for the last six years um we, we've tackled a lot of issues i like to say um and i think everyone in here is licensed by the state in some fashion correct um as am i as a realtor all those issues with related relation to your fees and your boards and and uh the way that operates that goes through licensing and occupations if you didn't know and um Certainly, it's a good thing for you to be knowledgeable and interested in, in your government. And when you pay those fees, know where they go. And anybody here serve on, the, on a board that you're licensed under? Okay, we got one, which is good. Uh, two, three, all right, we got a few. So you know how that works. And it's, uh, it's important that you all stay engaged with your legislators, whether it's through your profession or just 
in general, and that obviously goes to your local elected officials. Um, now, I, I don't know how to improve upon making something um, more interesting than market research and statistics. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as a political science major, I took some public administration classes, which include uh, plenty of stats. And then I straight out of college, I worked for several years in market research. So I know how, how those things go and how uh, exciting or not exciting they can be. Uh, but I do appreciate the opportunity to, get, to address you all, and, and I want you all to know that uh, this group is, is effective in Frankfurt. Uh, Mike Stone does a terrific job of being seen and um, uh, speaking up for, for uh, these issues in a uh, non-controversial fashion, which is kind of new in our politics nowadays, so we appreciate that. So I'm going to learn, see if I know how to work this thing. There we go. So... Um, where are we in Kentucky today? And I'm going to talk about kind of where we're at, what the status is in the legislature, and then where I see things going in the future. Uh, there are three types of legal gaming in Kentucky today, paramutual, the lottery, and charitable gaming. Paramutual uh, encompasses a few things. It's the oldest form of legal wagering, and, and clearly I need to up my uh, PowerPoint game after seeing the other presentations and the way things come up on here. So these are very boring. I tried to find some, some things like the Derby logo to kind of illustrate that um, it is what so many people outside of Kentucky connect with Kentucky, is the Kentucky Derby in horses. So it's an important part of, of Kentucky. It's an important part of our, of our legacy. We like to say it's one of our two signature industries, along with bourbon. Um, it was happening in Kentucky for many, many years. And there was a suit challenging its legality. And in 1935, the state Supreme Court uh, decided that parimutuel wagering was legal under the state constitution um, because you are, um, it was not considered a lottery. There were, pro there were prohibitions on lotteries um, at that time. Since then, we passed the lottery amendment, which we can talk about. Um, and our laws regarding paramutual wagering uh, were updated with the passage of, of House Bill 606 last year. Uh, and we will get into that here in a little bit. Um, with regards to paramutual wagering, we've had obviously a huge expansion when it comes to historical horse racing facilities. Uh, the historical horse racing facilities um, and the paramutual laws surrounding them were codified in Senate Bill 120 uh, in 2021, which uh, was sponsored by Senator Schickel um, in Boone County, up by me. I'm from Erlanger and Kenton County, uh, and I carried that bill in the House. As you can see, there are several current locations in operation across the state. Um, that is a, a current list. There are more, and let me kind of bounce back and forth here to talk about what could be coming. There are two new historical horse racing machines in the pipeline, one in Sandy Ridge and Ashland. Sandy Ridge is the new quarter horse track that has been approved and is going to be um, operating physically in Ashland, um, hopefully by 2025. And for the record, I'm the new executive director of the Kentucky Quarter Horse Racing Association, which represents the horsemen. Uh, and so I'm in, you know, I work with these folks um, in Ashland, but there will be a new HHR facility there. There is going to be a new uh, track extension here in Owensboro. Um, and I think it's in like an old mall, is that right? Okay. Uh, and I don't know where that mall is located, but I know that, that how far, does anyone know? I don't even know how far along they are in, in this. Does anybody here know how, how close they are to being done? There's a sign that says May 2023. Okay, well, there you go. May 2023 is important to Churchill, so. They just had some information on the news last night. I don't know if anybody saw it where they're going to go against the uh, typical smoking uh, oh, ban in Owensboro to allow 
designated smoking room doors and okay. parts of the HHR because it was such a such amount of money and such a large size that they could do that. So. Okay. Uh, in case anyone didn't hear, the folks online didn't hear, apparently they're going to have a, a um, designated smoking areas in the Owensboro facility. Now, according to the law, there are at least five more HHR facilities that can still be built uh, because each track, there's nine licenses, each license comes with a basically two HHR facilities, one theoretically kind of on-site and the other off-site. Uh, we call them track extensions. So uh, Keelan and Red Mile, they share one facility at Red Mile in Lexington, but they have two licenses. So theoretically, they could produce three more locations um, throughout Lexington, and there's rules around where you can put them. They have to be within 60 miles of your facility, blah, 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 blah. Um, the Ellis Park one we've talked about, Oak Grove, which is in Hoptown, um, they have one and they could uh, create another one. And then uh, the Ashland facility, uh, they're planning on creating another one and it'll probably be south of Ashland, uh, but still in obviously in the Eastern Kentucky area. Next is the lottery we're all familiar with that i think that was uh, 1988 or 80 89 i think it was 88 that it passed the constitutional amendment passed to create the lottery in 1989 uh, it started as you can see in fiscal year 22 it had 1.6 billion in revenue its revenue has picked up over the last few years quite a bit i think a lot of that is leadership and i think a lot of that is COVID as was discussed last year. Their largest area is uh, Kino and their instant games in general. Uh, and I will talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but their internet sales comprise 15% of revenue. Um, I've, um, I'm not much of a lottery player, uh, but I have a group of friends in Frankfurt. And when some of the Powerballs get big, they all want to all of us to buy a ticket, get in together so we can split it when we win, because certainly that's going to happen. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I've downloaded the Kentucky Lottery app because I get tired of getting to the store and having to do it myself. So uh, obviously the ease is there, and that is certainly something that um, needs to be of concern. But even to that point, I think Kino runs about 24-7, so you can actually get on the lottery app and play Kino all day, every day, if you like. And finally, charitable gaming. It is, um, uh, its gross revenues are 581 million. It is not growing. Um, one of the most interesting stats I ever heard uh, in my time in Frankfurt, uh, I was new to the licensing and occupations committee, so this was probably 13, 14 years ago. And uh, we were getting a report on charitable gaming and they reported that the county with the biggest amount of charitable gaming revenue was Jefferson County, not a surprise. Second biggest one was my county, Kenton County, uh, also not a surprise. Um, I'm a Catholic, I went to Catholic high school, I've been to a few bingos in my life. Um, my grandmother may or may not have taken me to bingo and my brother to bingo when we were 13, 14. Um, I will neither confirm or deny that, but um, the third most popular, or the state, or I'm sorry, county in the state that had the most revenue was Simpson County, which boggled my mind. Uh, because it's, if you don't know, it's a small county at the Tennessee border at the end of 65. Um, and that was because there was literally no legal gaming in Tennessee except for the lottery at that time. And there was such demand, if you got off the last exit where Kentucky Downs is now, there were just big, huge warehouse buildings running bingos all day, every day, because there was so much pent-up demand for that. Now those people can get off and go to Kentucky Downs and play the HHR machines. Um, and that is not uncommon throughout the state. They've certainly done that at the bottom of 75 uh, next to Tennessee with uh, the Cumberland 
uh, and and its uh, extension. Uh, so it's uh, it, it is not a, a growing area, but um, we, we have allowed the use of electronic pull tabs, uh, which are basically like little iPods or iPad. Well, they started as little iPads, where you could just do that instead of having to physically rip it paper uh, but now I mean I a couple of years ago last time I was here I was at the VFW here and they've got little machines mm -hmm. there that look a lot like uh, slot machines from probably 40 years ago um, to be played so and I met with uh, an operator um, in this space a, a couple weeks ago and he told me that he the company he left um, was was purchased by a hedge fund and they make these uh, electronic pull tab games. So clearly it is, is something that has become very useful and is a good um, thing for hedge funds apparently to get involved in. So it's, it's not a, uh, an operation that, is, that doesn't have a future according to, to these hedge funds. So that's where we've been over time. Now an update of, from last year's legislative session. In, in that session, I unveiled a package of gaming bills. Um, and as you can see, 606 was sports wagering. 607 was the parimutuel reform I spoke about, which I will get into. 608 was from Representative Timoney in Lexington about banning gray games. And uh, House Bill 609 was a bill related to problem gaming, which I will kind of give you a little rundown of all of them. 606, legalized sports betting, also uh, regulated daily fantasy sports. Anybody know what that is? Everybody know what that is? Like uh, DraftKings, yes, FanDuel. Fan uh, yeah. There's one more that's a big one, but it's like on demand. Sure, it's kind of an offshoot of the old rotisserie baseball fantasy, you know, uh, that you can do. Yahoo is a big operator. CBS Sports is an operator of these things. These things operate in every state out in the open. Uh, these are U.S.-based companies, and there are, in Kentucky, no regulations surrounding them. No reason, in my mind, not to do that because you're providing protections for the players. And, um, you know, most of these protections, these operators do now because they have to do it in all the states and they just do it everywhere. Uh, but if you get new ones in, if you get, you know, small ones in that are trying to um, get their start, they may not do that. It also included online poker, which, as I'm sure everybody knows here, used to be something one engaged in. I can neither confirm nor deny I used to engage in that. And and frankly supplement my income uh, because I get stats or the doctor go. Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, that, that is viewed as too much of a, of a casino game for a lot of folks. 607, um, modernized our pair mutual laws. That came from a task force uh, after we uh, reviewed and updated our parimutuel laws in 2021 with regards to historical horse racing mach machines. Um, we created a task force to kind of look at the entire parimutuel system. It's basically 100 years old, and um, so we got into the into the details. Um, I made sure, and it did a lot of stuff. I made sure that uh, one thing in there was a mandatory self-exclusion list. So if you go to there too much, if you go to it a little bit and you say, I don't, I don't even want to be tempted anymore, you, there, there will be some place, probably player services and all these HHR facilities where you can say, I, I don't, don't let me in here anymore. Uh, and we also mandate that that self-exclusion list is shared among all the operators and all the HHR facilities in the in the state. So they can say, don't let me in here for a week. Don't let me in here for a month. Don't let me in here for a year. Don't ever let me back in into this place. And that information will be shared uh, and kept amongst all the all the operators. And last time I talked to the Horse Racing Commission about a month ago, they were 
this close to ha having it operational. So um, that was, that, I thought that was important. We also raised the fees on the HHR machines, I don't know, 10 times, 15 times as much, something like that, um, to have additional regulation. There was, I think, three regulators for what was then 11 facilities. Um, if you go to any casino in the country, you know, there is a regulator on site every minute they're open. Um, and I want to get there and that money is directed specifically for that. Now that hasn't happened yet. And the report I got was that this administration is, is that it's called restricted funds and they have not released those restricted funds to start that happening yet. So I don't know what's up with that, but one day soon I'll poke around the administration and, and find out why that is. 608 would have eliminated gray machines throughout Kentucky. Who knows what I'm talking about with gray machines? We got three of you. All right. Has anybody gone into a restaurant, a bar, seen them? They're burning barrels or wildcats games. Um, they kind of look like the old arcade games in a little box, but shorter. Um, they're called gray games in the industry because they operate in a gray area. They claim to be skill-based. Um, I've seen um, some uh, that, you know, some presentations that say where they basically have shown me allegedly how to win um, but you know sometimes you can sit there and spend you know if you put in two bucks you can spend 15 minutes and you can win if you want to take the time and you can get back like 220 well, who's going to spend 10 minutes to win 20 cents not a lot of people um, only, the, only the most stubborn among us, and I am German and Catholic, so I am somewhat stubborn, but I'm not even that stubborn. Um, but anyway, they, uh, they have proliferated um, throughout the state. It's, it's been an issue. Uh, we, we passed a, a version of uh, getting rid of them last year, that bill. Um, it went to the Senate. They passed a different version. Uh, they sent it back to us and for various reasons um, could not come to an agreement. Actually, we could not get the votes for their version. Um, and uh, so it did not pass. Uh, I'll have an update on that here later in the presentation. And then there was House Bill 609, the one excited, most interesting maybe we'll, to this. Uh, would have created the Kentucky Problem Gaming Fund with $225 million. Uh, there was when Black, we call it Black, we call it, they call it Black Friday in the online poker industry when everything was shut down. Um, folks couldn't use it anymore thanks to the federal government. Um, and um, there was an operator that continued to operate in Kentucky. At some point, the um, then the, as we call them, Papa Bashir administration um, sued, took, took control of their, of their domain names, um, and it literally took until 2021, it was something like 10 years, to get a judgment in our favor. Um, it was $300 million after our friends, the attorneys, God bless them, took their portion. That left the state with $225 million from the proceeds of that. So... Um, I had a bill to take all of that money and dedicate it to a problem gaming fund. Uh, and I talked about how we don't do anything, how we've never done anything, um, and how uh, what better use of money that, was, that came from illegal sources than to put it to a fund that if we had put in all of that money, would have been so big, it would have probably lasted in perpetuity, certainly longer than any of us will live to see it, but probably for a century um, in order to deal with the issues that we've talked about and will be talked about later. Um, I was, I was, it, we, we did pass it, Senate did not. Um, 
even give it a hearing in committee. It did. It was amended down to $75 million because, like good politicians, people like to spend that money on other things. I was very disappointed in the ones who literally got up on the historical horse racing machine stuff and talked about the predatory nature of it. Same with my sports betting bill, how terrible it was. It was destroying families. And then when we have money to actually help those people, literally one of them came up to me uh, when I, he's a guy I don't really talk to. Um, we don't really see eye to eye on anything. And I was trying to be nice, like, hey, you have to like my problem gaming bill. And he looked at me and said, well, that's an insult to Eastern Kentucky. I could use that money for my people. So anyway, that's a little background inside baseball story of, uh, of, of that. But uh, that, that was, uh, I wasn't happy with the uh, amendment to 75 million, but it was better than nothing. Um, and, but unfortunately, like I said, it did not get through the Senate. So. Is that money still available, or has it been allocated? Oh, it's been allocated in other manners. <clears throat> that was 2022. We, we, so it's no longer an option. It's, it's no longer an option, no. Um, I mean, it's always an option if you can get the budget. You, you get a line item put in the budget to do it. Um, you know, they can spend money any way they like. Uh, but the, um, I've, I've viewed that as a one-time opportunity. And let me j just say that it was kind of a radical idea because it's, I mean, I, we, we've had Mike and, and others, and we've talked about it in the interim and the need for it, but it wasn't really, it was kind of a radical idea from globally in the legislature to, to address this issue and address it with that much money. And it, you know, I mean, no other state, you know, it was easy for them to point to, no other state spends this money, much money, no other state's ever done this much before. Um, you know, it was a big leap. And, um, you know, when I ran bills, I would go big, I would put as much stuff in there as you can, because you can always negotiate down. If you start with 75 million, they're going to negotiate you down to 25 million. Uh, so I went big. You never know. Sometimes you, you pull it off, but you know, not always. But uh, as we continue to talk about it, I know it's it's being talked about uh, this year. It's not going to happen this year. But as you keep talking about it and you keep talking about the need, um, people get more used to it. New people come in who hear it talked about and assume and think that it's a good idea. So um, if you keep it in the public eye, eventually, hopefully, we will get there. So, as a Calvin and Hobbes fan, I found this to be kind of comical, talking about where we're headed. So, I will give you predictions and thoughts, some of which might actually come true, but most likely none of them will, like any good prognosticator. But uh, you can bring me back in 25 years and, and pull this out and see how much I was right. So, this year, Representative Meredith um, has taken my... Uh, my sports betting bill um, and run with it, which I'm very appreciative of. He and I are very good friends. Uh, the, th this year's bill uh, has removed the internet poker and the daily fantasy sports. Uh, the internet poker was always probably coming out. That was what I was going to give away, even though I would really like to do it legally. And because I can't do it legally, I don't do it at all. Um, but um, He's already taken out the, the poker and the daily fantasy sports. He said that that will, will make it easier for them to swallow down in the Senate. Um, so I did this on, well, I sent it off on Saturday. So I finished it on Saturday. Yesterday morning, uh, that bill passed unanimously through the Licensing and Occupations Committee. Um, we expect it will pass the House. And um, what will happen in the Senate, I don't know. It's, I th but I think it's close. I would not be surprised. It's a higher bar in a short, odd-numbered year. Um, next year, if it doesn't pass this year, it's more likely to pass uh, next year. And then, as I write on there, um, there's a fairly decent chance that if it doesn't pass this year, that the governor will, uh, at least that's the rumor, I don't want to, you know, he has, I haven't talked to him about it, but that he may just do that by executive order. Um, so, as he did with the um, 
medicinal marijuana stuff earlier. Next, the Gray Games bill. Um, Representative Timoney uh, filed it again, made the House floor on Friday. Um, it was a procedural motion uh, to lay it upon the table. That procedural motion was put forth by my replacement. Not that I'm bitter about it or anything. Um, uh, but as an update, yesterday also, yesterday was gaming day apparently in Frankfurt. Uh, the uh, motion to take it off the table was successful and it passed 6432. And it goes on to the Senate where I believe uh, there's an agreement from what I've been told that they're not going to amend it and they will pass it. So um, if not, you know, there are, we don't know how many of these machines are out there, um, but at some point if we don't deal with them and that point probably being this year, they're going to be so ubiquitous uh, and there are so many restaurants and convenience stores uh, on every corner in some parts of the state that have them that you won't be able to get rid of them. So I really think it's important that it get done this year. Next, casinos. Some people view the historical horse racing machine facilities as casinos, and I understand that. Um, According to the American Gaming Association, there are 44 casino states in America, and we are not one. Um, and that, I think, is the difference between having table games and not having table games. Um, now, there are many, um, many issues with that. I think we, were, we will get there one day. What it will look like, I don't know. It might take, take a change in... Um, in um, the Constitution. However, if these gray games stick around and if they get outlawed, they're going to sue. They're going to claim their skill-based game. And as that goes through through the courts, if a court agrees with them and says that they are illegal, um, well, then poker's legal, in my non-attorney expert opinion. Um, one can argue that that um, other table games like blackjack might be legal. Um, otherwise, and another thing that I didn't think to put on here on Saturday, uh, anyone from Paducah in here? There we go. You know where I'm going? So. Money Makers Poker Room. It's been closed down. They got approval. So Aunt Chris Moneymaker, who won, who's a big poker celebrity, we'll call it that way, uh, opened a room in Paducah. Um, he um, wants to kind of start this moneymaker social club poker uh, thing. Why they pick Paducah, I, I, I don't know. I'm sure it's a terrific place. Um, and I guess the casino closed down their poker room, so they saw an opportunity uh, there. But anyway, um, first the county attorney said, sure, it was fine. Elections have consequences. That county attorney was kicked out. New county attorney shut them down. That said, I might have a Poker Atlas app on my phone. Um, and I looked, and there's apparently a poker room in Henderson. And there's four other poker rooms um, throughout the state. And Moneymaker's going to probably sue uh, to find out if his operation is legal. Why did I tell you all this? Because the, these lawsuits are going to decide how easy or hard it's going to be to have casinos in Kentucky. Um, so it could be sooner rather than later. Is that my alarm? Am I, am I getting, is there going to be a big, arm, big thing come in and <laughs> give me this? Um, and if gray games aren't outlawed, the next step may very well be to, um, to regulate them. And then you're going to have literally thousands of mini casinos throughout this state. Um, and then kind of the final frontier, as I see it, is iGaming. There are six states where there are basically on legal online casinos. And I haven't even gotten into the illegal off, offshore sports betting and, and uh, casinos that 
uh, you can use, just not legally. Um, but you can see the states right there, and you know you can argue that the lottery has dipped their toe into the uh, iGaming world with the ability to play Keno on your phone basically all the time. Um, so that is kind of the inside story as best I can tell it without, you know, getting too many people in trouble, including myself. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about this topic, any of the details or whatever. I should have had a, a Schoolhouse Rock video if I was good at, at, uh, at this topic at, at PowerPoint, so I would have come up with one. Yes, sir. Adam, could you relate what you believe is the responsibility of the state in regard to the legalization regulation of gambling? Sure, what is the responsibility of the state? Um, look, we, we, I, I think operators have a responsibility. And I was glad to see all these operators uh, doing that. And I, and I will say that uh, the American Gaming Association really focuses on this. I think operators are starting to learn that um, having people who have addictions, who, who create problems in communities and families is not good business. And they, and uh, most of them are doing a pretty good job of starting to um, deal with that. Uh, and I think um, most of the operators in Kentucky um, wouldn't argue or put up a big fight with something. It's a matter of, um, another good thing about that money was it was just kind of an independent pot of money. Um, my first few versions of my sports betting bill that I had filed for four years uh, put aside money from that into a problem gaming account, and it was, you know, we were looking at a million or two, uh, something to get started. Um, but it was really theoretic or philosophically not fair to put all that burden on one portion of the industry. So I think there is efforts to see about how to spread that or cost some requirement across all of the forms of gaming to make sure that um, it's done properly. But I, I believe we have a responsibility. Um, I think we have a responsibility as Christians. I think we have a responsibility of um, helping people in general. And I think we, it, it makes a lot of financial sense from no other point of if we can get these folks into your offices and get them help, uh, it's a whole lot cheaper to do that than it is to put them in jail. Mm -hmm. And the associated costs that we all pay through whatever, you know, whatever the, the bad effects of it are. So, yes, sir. What suggestions do you have for our council things that we might do that would be acceptable to the legislature. And I'm thinking the legislator having a mindset sure. that's understandable. I think we have to um, raise awareness. Mike's there uh, every time it's needed. Um, I know he has uh, some folks join him on it. Um, and I know you all are working for a living and, and have schedules and whatnot, but um, you need to figure out how to raise awareness. Um, and that's gonna take more of you, um, whether it's you know all of you in Louisville, figure out how to meet with the Jefferson County Caucus to talk about these things and, and, and you know, emphasize that it's important um, and give them kind of some ideas I think it's important to explain, hey, there are 41 other states that have money directed to this. Why is Kentucky not one of them? And you kind of go after their sense of pride of, you know, hey, we're the horse capital of the world. Why aren't we the problem gaming capital of, of America? You know, why, 
we, we, sh we should at least be on the map, not in last place. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can probably come up with better ideas and, and better suggestions and, and give them to Mike, but um, you, you got to be seen. You got to touch legislators one on one, and it doesn't need to be in Jefferson Ca County alone. It needs to be all of them. We all have regional caucuses, okay? Uh, Northern Kentucky, uh, Louisville, Lexington, Eastern, Western. I mean, they're, they, they all exist and they all meet on their own schedule, some of them often, some of them less often. But um, if you can get to all those folks and, um, you know, make them aware that uh, we should at least be in the game, not completely out of it, and in last place on this topic, um, and like I said, appeal to their sense of pride that we should, this is something we should be proud to do. Um, and there is, I mean, over all the sources of gaming, we're pretty close to $10 billion a year being wagered legally. We can find some, some of that money um, to go to this. It doesn't, I mean, a million dollars is one-tenth of, no, one one-hundredth of one percent of that. I think we can handle that. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Yeah, one, of the, one of the issues that we, we face, it, it, you're obviously aware of this, but anytime most, most of the bills that you talked about were to promote more, ga more gambling, okay? And when you enter in support for problem gambling, the sponsors, as well as the administration, don't want to talk about it. They don't, they see that as a detriment to getting it passed when you bring up the problem. So, th therefore, whether it's the governor's office, uh, if you bring up problem gambling as part of any legislation, he doesn't want anything to do with it because it reminds people that we have problems. They don't yes. Know, they don't want to address the, the fact that we've got problems. Right. We just want more money coming into our Sure. Topics. Yeah. And for the folks online, the, the question or the point was basically that, you know, no one likes to talk about it uh, because it reminds people that there are problems. Um, look, the, the alcohol industry... Um, Kentucky Distillers in, in particular, they have uh, like two employees dedicated to making sure that people enjoy responsibly. Um, and, uh, you know, there is no Kentucky Association of, of Gambling Operators. Um, and so someone needs to kind of pick up that ball and talk about it. Uh, it took a probably longer than it should have in retrospect to get to the KDA to get to that point. Um, uh, I don't blame them, they're, but they're, they're doing what they're doing now. Um, somebody needs to pick up that ball and educate, and, and, and it, you know, it takes a while. Government moves slowly. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It depends on what the bill is and how I feel about it. <laughs> but. Um, it, the, the education needs to continue, and all the education talk has been in the Licensing and Occupations Committee. We need to figure out opportunities to spread that to people who aren't on that fun committee. So, do uh, we want to keep talking or do we want to have lunch? <laughs> I vote for lunch. How about that? Thank you all very much.